Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday night talk hosted by the Brahma Kumaris at the Anubhuti Meditation and Retreat Center. So welcome, I'm your host, Elizabeth, and we tonight's talk is on the art of developing intuition with Vinod Mangopara. He's a wonderful speaker and very experienced. Uh, he's been a surgeon, uh, a pain management doctor here in um, California, and he's been practicing Raj Yoga meditation and teaching for some time now. And we have him here telling us about this gift of intuition and how we can um, create those steps to develop intuition and understand exactly how special this art is. So welcome, Brother Vinod. Om Shanti. Uh, as I was thinking uh, this topic, about this topic, um, I found that it is a, a good thing to have. Uh, I felt really good to that I'm able to uh, give talk about this because I realized that everything that I I present uh, or uh, participate in, I it benefits me. So let's get to the topic: the art of developing intuition. Um, I would like to begin with a question. Uh, and like my previous uh, uh, talks, uh, I would use the audio video uh, guide that helps uh, uh, helps me present it better and for our better understanding of uh, overall. So let me share the screen. So, there's a scenario, let's begin with that question, that uh, you plan something and uh, just before that plan comes into action, uh, your mind is filled with a lot of doubts and, and you begin to have alternative options. Uh, as if someone within is guiding you not to go for that plan. So the question is, what would you call this? Is this an intuition? And second question is, uh, would you change your plan or would you go for the original plan? And uh, how would you know that you're taking the right step? Just take a 30 seconds and uh, see what comes up in your, in your uh, heart or mind. And then I'm going to share. It's a very relevant question, very important. All right, uh, so let's go on to the answer. Uh, all the answers that you may have given, uh, it is correct in a way because you're listening to uh, your intuition. And so here it is. The, question, the answer is actually a question. How did you feel when you heard those, uh, heard those voices inside? How did you feel? Did you feel good? And if you felt good, that was your intuition. And did you feel not good? Then it was not intuition. Because number one criteria for intuition is that it will make you feel happy always. No matter what, the, your intuition should make you feel happy and take you to a safe place. So if you are in a dangerous situation and some uh, inner voice uh, tells you something and you feel that that's the right thing to do, that is the way to go. So that inner feeling that tells you gives away the uh, intuition. That's very subtle and uh, we need to learn that and we will learn more about this. It's a beautiful topic to learn. So that's first uh, thing. And so intuition is a like we have uh, a thinking brain, a logical brain that uh, tells us 
what to do, how to do, and we go into the details of something. Uh, the intuiting, intuitive mind or brain, it does opposite. It does not go into any logical steps. Um, so it is a feeling that you get or a voice that you hear. Uh, and you get a feeling of sudden awareness or understanding that this is how it should be done or this is how it should not be done. And uh, which, whether this is right or wrong, which path I should take. So in Hindi, it is called as a Vivek Buddhi. Uh, so that is your inner guide that always guides you to the right path. Mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to any other guide outside one's or even your mind or anything else. This is the guide that tells you the, the right course of action. And uh, we will learn why this uh, guy, how this guide is always right. We will learn that also. It's very fascinating. Uh, so two important characteristics of the intuition are number one, it is sudden, it's fast. I should have written fast instead of sudden, immediate. It's really quick. Within second, you know it. Uh, that speed cannot be achieved with your thinking brain. Uh, if you think of uh, a, a danger situation again, and in a fraction of a second, you know what to do. That's your intuition. If you use your brain and you start to think, no, I need to do this way or that way and try to rationalize that, that is not your intuition. So there's a big distinction between the rational mind, rational thinking and intuition. And the second characteristic is there is a sense of certainty that it, it, is, it is guaranteed way to take you to a safe zone, guaranteed. Um, and uh, educated guess, you can also learn and make a nice educated guess about something, but there's always a doubt in your mind versus the intuition. It has so much uh, clarity inside, in inbuilt clarity in it that you have no doubt about it. You, you hear it, all you have to do is hear. Once you hear it, that's it. You re there remains no doubt in your mind that that's how you should do. And so these are the two most important characteristics. Uh, and uh, there's a direct access to the unconscious knowledge. So, uh, there is conscious knowledge and unconscious knowledge or subconscious. Subconscious mind and subconscious mind. The uh, information is stored in both these areas. The short-term information and uh, quick action in, uh, information is in, in your conscious mind. Uh, and But the subconscious is much larger where uh, a lot more is stored. All the previous memories, all past, uh, events, everything, the essence of everything is in that. And so uh, all the experiences that you have had so far are all within that uh, subconscious or unconscious knowledge. And uh, you are tapping your intuition. Intuition is a process actually. And uh, the uh, your intellect is the one who uh, exercises that. So that your uh, intellect taps into that unconscious or subconscious mind and derives this uh, quick uh, solution for yourself, uh, for any situation or any uh, condition. And uh, I'm just talking about the big things, but it, it gives you uh, an opinion for every little things that you do. Uh, am I going to uh, sleep at 10 o'clock or 10.30? Your um, uh, intuition will tell you, but you got to listen. Uh, am I going to uh, go this way or this way? It will tell you. So little things to big things to everything.
there is a voice. Uh, so inner sensing, ability to understand something without the need of conscious reasoning. There is no reasoning involved. You cannot, uh, there's no science. Uh, the science cannot tell that this is how it, uh, it works. And so there is no conscious reasoning. It just, it just knows. Your uh, intellect just knows that this is how it is. This is what it is. So um, there's no logic in that one. And uh, another thing is uh, some people call it gut feeling, gut instinct, or sixth, sixth sense. Uh, so we should not go into that. But it's just a gut feeling that we have. So very important to learn, uh, know this uh, definition and understanding of intuition. And uh, as opposed to the logical thinking or rational thinking or rationalization, what are the differences? Like we said, intuition is, uh, there is no analysis, no logic, no reason, versus the rational uh, uh, thinking means there is analysis, the systematic calculated moves. Uh, there is a scientific uh, decision-making involved. So everything stepwise. Uh, one example that comes to my mind, a spiritual one, is the uh, atheist mind. Uh, I would call them their mind as uh, rational or logical thinking type of mind, who always will want a proof, a scientific proof or understanding uh, uh, for accepting anything. <clears throat> um, the second difference is the, uh, like intuition, uh, it does not rely on the conscious uh, brain, conscious uh, part of the mind. Uh, versus the rational thinking or logical thinking depends on the conscious uh, conscious part of the brain or mind. I wrote brain, but it should be mind. <clears throat> so what does the, uh, what does the uh, intuition depend on? It depends on the core values. And I will go into the details of what those are and we'll, we'll slowly stepwise uh, go to a you know, very perfect understanding of this thing. And so uh, I'd like to uh, show you one, uh, a, a short clip, a video clip right here. So I'm gonna share a different screen. All right, so we're gonna look at this one. It's like a, maybe a half a minute, two minutes, two minutes, I think. So let's. She on the uneven bars. Chris, this could be the highlight of the compulsory event. She is one of the technically strongest, best gymnasts that I've ever seen. Watch this. Beautiful rhythm, right to a handstand. Oh, look at that amplitude. Ooh. She is really moving well. Another handstand. Look at that, right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine. Beautiful in the crowd. Love. It wasn't just the... So we're back in this, and uh, you're all familiar with that uh, video that uh, we saw. Um, this was a great athlete of 70s, and uh, the perfect 10 scores previously was never achieved by anybody, and so became very famous in gymnastic. 
So the question is, uh, what uh, the what was the uh, athletes' uh, main? Um, what did the athlete use mainly? Did did she use the intuition or a logical thinking in exercising? So uh, this is what I think. <clears throat> A rational thinking, I can exercise and learn something logically and uh, uh, rigorous training. I can become perfect in that. But I cannot be completely uh, perfect to achieve tens without the use of intuition. Because um, Without the intuition, I would have doubt in me. I would, that confidence that's there on the athlete's uh, actions, everything uh, that uh, she performed cannot be there without the intuition. Because like we previously saw, uh, logical thinking means you could know everything and still you would have doubt. Uh, and intuition on the other, ha other hand, uh, no doubt. And uh, the second uh, part is quick, in a split of second, quick actions, the presence of uh, mind in, in a quick action. So rational, with rational thinking, I cannot very second, fraction of a second, fraction of a second, I cannot excel like that. I need to use my intuitive, intuitive brain to, uh, derive at every second, what am I going to do? So that's my thinking. So uh, what uh, what played the larger role in the performance and why? Uh, and uh, the answer is uh, they both, both use, but larger part was the intuition. Quick decisions like this cannot come from the conscious mind and the amount of confidence you cannot be achieved from conscious mind. So a big part was played by the intuition. I'm gonna share one other, another um, a short clip. Birds build some of the most intricately designed and well-made nests of all birds. A group of graduate students at Witwatersrand University in Johannesburg was given two weeks to try to make a nest just like a weaver bird's nest. They failed. Weaver birds build their nests at the end of thin branches to make it harder for tree climbing snakes to eat their eggs or babies. Usually the process starts by the male removing last year's nest from a branch. He's got one side loose, now for the other side. Next, he begins collecting building materials by tearing off thin strips of grass, which he weaves to make a strong, well-anchored nest. The males do all the work. As they work, Females come and check out the quality of their nests. Over the next several days, the male collects grass and works from dawn to dusk, weaving it into the nest. And so we, sh we just uh, saw a small clip of how the weaver bird uh, made the nest. <clears throat> and so that was a, an example, 
I just wanted to show you that because there are three to four terms that uh, that come across and people confuse one to the other. So that was an example of instinct. So we saw the two things, uh, two words first. We saw uh, intuition and, and rationalism or rational thinking. Uh, the third one is this uh, instinct. <clears throat> so this bird did not have any experience or a formal training or nothing, but it knows how to build that ne nest. So is that how the instinct works? Or is that how the, our intuition works? There's a subtle difference. So what's the difference here? This is an expression of the, uh, our innate biological factors, or uh, it has a, a scientific um, a thing, a scientific uh, a process involved, similar to uh, cell division. You know, we have mitosis, or meiosis, how these cells divide, the chromosomes divide, and uh, it, it is exact replication. It always happened that way. How does the cell know how to divide? How does the uh, same, uh, similarly, how does this bird know how to build a nest? So that's more like an instinct, which is a physiological phenomenon that is seen in the physical world. And when we talk about intuition, we are talking about spiritual world. And some other examples of the instinct are uh, the joey, uh, the baby kangaroo. Uh, as soon as the, it is born, it climbs up. It is still covered by the membrane and everything doesn't have the eye to see anything. Uh, and hanging up, uh, it just climbs holding on to uh, mother's uh, belly, etc., but climbs into the pouch. How does it know uh, to climb into the pouch? All of them do that. And so that's amazing fact. So that's an instinct. And there are some other examples that I've written here. Um, and we'll see detail in, uh, as we go forward, uh, what's the difference between these things. Next is conscience. Conscience is a moral sense of right and wrong. So very simple uh, thing. So uh, we say this is right or this is wrong based on our moral uh, value. And each person's moral value is different depending on where they came from. Uh, looking straight into the eye and talking to somebody uh, may not be morally right uh, for the Eastern culture, but morally right here in Western culture. Looking down is not right. Looking straight in the eye of the person when talking to two is respecting them. <clears throat> so two different ways of thinking. So the, 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 uh, and there may be a different meaning that can be derived of what is this moral. Yeah, but we won't go into the details of that. But <clears throat> the deriving, uh, finding out what is right, what is wrong, based on what my moral value is. That's conscience. So these are four words uh, that we saw. And uh, I'm going to show you one diagram and that tells, that uh, explains a lot of this. <clears throat> uh, this is the man, this is our world right here. Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is the physical world below this line, everything below physical world. And this little mountain on the top of the head of this person is actually uh, the burden of the uh, 
the sanskar, what is called a sanskar or impressions that uh, this person carries. Or past experience, the memory of the past experiences this person is carrying. I have a memory of today, yesterday, one month prior when I was a baby. All these memories are stored within me and it's there. I also have a memory of, of my past birth and the birth previous and the one previous. So from top to bottom, we have about 5,000 years worth of uh, memories that's there. And uh, when we act here in this world, we use all of that, all of that. When I meet with somebody and I smile, I'm actually using everything that is in this one. And then a smile. That means I have a predominant smiling kind of a memory that looking at this person, I, I feel good. That memory I have inside. So that. There's a distinction between the line, uh, the, the, the below this and line above and line below. So this is a distinction. The memory stored uh, from 2,500 down here is more uh, uh, of the uh, memory of this age where it's a, uh, everybody is, uh, it's fast, it's paced, uh, there is a uh, push and pull of the life, and uh, there is a struggle, there is a little bit sorrow, all these are there. So that's, uh, I denoted that as a K, or what we call, what can be called as a Kalyugi memory or sanskar. It's there. Above this is S Satyugi memories or sanskars, where they're good memories, happy. Uh, events, happy thoughts, but they're deeper. They're not readily accessible here. They're deeper down here. This is more readily accessible. This is deeper. And then down here is my true original self. True original self. I, the soul, uh, everybody in this class knows soul and body. So I, the soul, am embodiment of purity, uh, peace, love, happiness, bliss, knowledge, and power. We all know that. So these are seven characteristics. So that's original me right here, above the whole world. Right? <clears throat> and then we have a supreme soul. So everything that I do, everything that I perceive, it depends on who I think I am. What is my awareness? Everything depends on that. And this I that I draw here, draw here, is my intellect. And that intellect is so very powerful, it can see so if my intellect is seeing me here in this world, then uh, my actions, thoughts, words are based on everything that is down here. So I will interact with others with these memories. When my intellect is looking at me as, as I am here. Um, when my intellect is looking at me here, when I think I am a pure soul, happy soul, peaceful soul, then these uh, memories are awakened 
and I see and, and uh, interact with the world with these memories. So I'm peaceful when I'm interacting with somebody and etc. So what this has to do with the today's topic is that we saw that we have intuition. So when I have intuition, I am, when I'm using my intuitive, my intuitive mind, I am elevating myself here. I'm looking at myself here. And then I am deriving information from the fund of the uh, knowledge or information that is stored here. So this information is readily available to me and looking at the cross section of this, uh, 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 this information in a split second, I can come with a decision and this is how I need to do. Because as a pure soul, what do I need? I just need, uh, I don't need anything, but if I have to have something, it would be peace and love. And that's it. Peace, love, happiness, something like that. So uh, the, there's no logic involved there. I know I need peace. I need peace. So I want to buy something. So if there's a double mind, whether I should buy or not, my um, intuitive intuition will tell, tell me what will give me peace that I will buy. So that's how it works. So versus if I'm here, which we are all of us do that, we are all, most of the time here and we interact and we go to buy something and we are looking at ourselves like this. And uh, now I'm looking at myself as I need this or I need that because I need to have, um, um, you know, this and so and so gadget, whatever. But I'm not talking in terms of peace at that time because I'm looking at uh, myself like this. So it's a complex thinking here. I want to derive, ultimately, I want to have happiness. Whatever I do, ultimately, it leads to that. Why am I working? I'm working because I need to make money. Why I need money? Because then I can buy something. Why do you want to buy something? Because I can eat, I can sleep. Why do you need to do that? I need to be peaceful and happy. Ultimately, it comes to that. But it's a long route that you take to derive to this uh, stage. So this is how the logical uh, thinking goes. Logical thinking they do not, unfortunately, they do not have access to any of these things. They don't have access to that. They have only access to this and not because somebody is tying them, they themselves are tying them. They are just putting themselves in this cage and say that this is my world. I don't believe in this uh, superstitious things and this is my world. This is how it should be. This is how the science says, this is how it is. So that, uh, the third uh, thing that we saw was the, um, the uh, cons conscience, conscience. Conscience is actually the same thing as this one. Uh, it is uh, part of the uh, rational thinking, but in terms of, uh, my moral values, what is morally good for me. And I will only look at that and I will make decision based on that. So that, and then uh, the fourth one that you saw the, uh, um, the instinct, which is a biological phenomenon and not a spiritual. So that, uh, you know, that is totally different. And so I hope this uh, makes us understand uh, the, uh, different terms that we use. And how does the, how does the, um, the intuition work? How does a conscious mind work? 
it thinks and analyzes and plans and uh, it acts. And we can do a few things with the conscious mind, but it's like a tip of an iceberg. Uh, the subconscious mind is huge. Uh, it utilizes this, uh, the intuition utilizes the subconscious mind and uh, the, the, uh, the various functions of that is emotions, uh, the beliefs and value habits, memory, deep memories, intuition, creativity, dream, and protective responses and involuntary body functions. So these are the uh, different functions of the subconscious mind. And uh, our intuition, which is right here, it uses uh, this fund of knowledge. Um, so uh, that's, that's why it is fast. Uh, within a split second, it, it can uh, tell you. And it's like a big uh, a bird's eye view and then tells you what to do. And very straightforward, no logical process involved. It's very, very powerful tool. Now, practically, how do we use the intuition? Uh, all of us, uh, one way or the other, use it. Uh, we make decisions and solve problems and we use uh, the intuition along with the uh, logical uh, thinking. Uh, some part of intuition is always there. Uh, scientists, uh, they use uh, the successful scientists, they're known to uh, be uh, using the intuitive mind more than anything else. And uh, because they, they get this new idea because they have this big view of everything and they can see uh, better than just a logical uh, mind. And so they can come up with different ideas and opportunities, and they actually can uh, uh, show the world something different. The quick responders uh, in healthcare and uh, uh, the military people, they also use the, rash, uh, the uh, uh, conscience because uh, when you're in a combat situation or when you are in a, a big health crisis going on and the first responders are there, they have to be very quick uh, and they need to make quick decisions what I need to do now. You know, uh, once a patient comes in the hospital, it's a different story. Doctor can easily take their time to decide, but the quick responders, they are very fast and they need to make very quick decisions like firefighters. So uh, they use that subconscious mind and they use the intuition a lot. Um, and then when, whenever we come into some unfamiliar situation or complex uh, uh, decision-making is involved, we use uh, the intuitive mind a lot. <clears throat> These are the, some of the areas. So, um, let's go to the next one. So, what do we have to do? We have to. Uh, what do we have to do to become successful and sharp and better? Uh, we have to definitely use our uh, intuitive mind. Uh, not that we are not using it, but we need to sharpen it uh, because we somehow. Uh, are very well, very no, we are known to uh, subdue our intuition or, or suppress it. And I'll uh, tell you an example. Um, a smoker, for example, he, the first time smoker uh, will uh, smoke and uh, uh, will get cough and this nasty smell or whatever, uh, but they will say, I don't, I don't want to uh, smoke again and they will, they will not touch it. But somehow, the, if this person second time goes into smoking, then he will, uh, that second time also, then inner voice will tell, you know, that's nasty, why do you have to go for it? 
but uh, somehow he will uh, go for that. And then third time and the fourth time. So every time his uh, intuition will tell him, not don't do that, don't do that. Or, uh, and uh, uh, a time comes when uh, he will not even listen to that voice that tells him not to do it. And so at the same way works the conscience. So it's very deep. Uh, the so conscience works the same way. Intuition works the same way. There's the intuitive voice that's always there by your side. Its voice gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Every time you suppress it, the voice becomes smaller. Next time you drink alcohol or smoke cigarette, it becomes smaller. And so uh, not that it, it does not die. It always will remain. Even though it knows that you're not going to listen, it will say that don't do it. It's not good for you and then you will do it. So we consciously suppress and subdue uh, that uh, intuition. So we need to reawaken it. We need to make friends with him and sharpen it. Um, we need to, secondly, another important point is, uh, because a lot of time, a lot of inner voices are going on. You know, intuition is not the only inner voice there. There, there are other inner voices too. There is a voice coming from my uh, a greed, uh, voice coming from my uh, attachment, lust, anger, uh, or jealousy. All these little things that are there inside, they have their own voices. So there is a big noise going on inside. And uh, a lot of times, some of these, uh, the voices are more powerful than the others, depending on what my stage is. If my stage is low, then every voice that I mentioned now are louder than the, the, the good voice. And so then I tend to listen to those, those. And I think that, oh, my intuition told me to do like this. And then I make a wrong decision. So we need to discern. Uh, that which voice is my true voice of my intuition and which voice is fake. I need to learn that. It's a big tool that we need to learn. And uh, yeah, you need to complement one with the other. You cannot just say, I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to only listen to my intuition. No, that doesn't work. You're living in this world, you use both. You can't just use one hand. You need to use both hands. Okay, so as we know, the soul is made up of, uh, soul has uh, three faculties, man, buddhi, sanskar, mind, buddhi, and sanskar. And uh, I deliberately use the term buddhi because I like to say that instead of intellect. Um, <clears throat> so what does the, what is the function of the mind? Uh, in, uh, uh, Dr. Satish Gupta, our senior brother, uh, I learned when I was learning this, uh, I used to listen to him a lot and he would say team, team, think, uh, the thoughts, emotions, attitude, and memory. That's our mind. So thinking mind, Emotion, the feeling mind, uh, attitude and memory, gross memory. Now, gross memory, uh, the superficial memory. There, now there are deeper memories down in intellect too. So don't get confused there. And then there's a sanskar, which is also a deeper, deepest level of the memory. So that memory has three levels. <clears throat> but team is our mind. Uh, my thinking, my feeling, my attitude, what I remember. Buddhi or intellect. Intellect has deep impressions or memories. Intellect listens and intellect see. So it's a guide. It see, okay, this is my goal. 
and your mind follows. Or intellect listens. So antakaran and um, the inner eye and inner ear. That's our intellect. It analyzes, it understands, and it figures out right or wrong. And that figuring out right or wrong is the intuition. Whether this is right or wrong, whether this is good or bad, whether I need to accept this or reject that, that uh, function of the intellect is called in Hindi, Vivek, in English, intuition. So, any knowledge that I listen, I analyze, I understand, and then I think that, oh, this is beneficial for me or not, and then I accept or reject that part. Okay. So the question is, how does the intellect know uh, and decide, I need to accept this, I need to reject this? How does the intellect know that? And like in the diagram that we saw previously, the eye of the intellect looks at me, the original self, um, pure soul, happy soul, etc. And that it compares with the, the new knowledge that is there with my original self and then decide that this is right or this is good for me or this is not good for me. That's how it decides. So it remains close to my original self and remaining there, it makes a decision. So that's the tool that the intellect uses uh, to exercise the intuition. And the tool is our core values, our seven core values that it uses. And so the topic of today is how to uh, develop the art of developing intuition. And so one, we said we need to sharpen our intuition. And so how do you do that? First, practice being in silence. Uh, when I'm, when I'm, when I am silent, what, what is the meaning of being in silence? When I am silent, all my three faculties, my mind, intellect, sanskar, everything is aligned into one line. That means my sanskar is um, in line with the Supreme Soul. I have memory of me, I the soul, who is pure, I have memory of the Supreme Soul. So that memory uh, the sanskar has, everything else is aligned with that. So there is Supreme Soul, memory of Supreme Soul in my intellect, in my uh, sanskar. Then I have uh, my own memory of I am a peaceful soul, pure soul, etc. Then my intellect is not wandering here or there. My intellect is looking at me, the pure me, not looking at Tamo Pradhan me or the uh, the. Uh, me in my lower consciousness. My intellect is looking at me in my higher consciousness. And uh, my mind, that means my team is aligned. My thoughts are aligned. No negativity in my thoughts. Less of the waste thoughts are there. My attitude is the uh, attitude uh, comes from uh, my high stage. It is based on my higher stage and uh, my memory of the Supreme Soul, my home, my future kingdom. So everything aligned into one 
with minimum number of thoughts. That's the peace or silence. When I am, I have a practice of being in the silence on and on and on throughout the actions that I perform in the day or even, even in the, uh, not while not doing anything when I remain in the silent stage, then I have a higher chance of accessing my intuition. All the time intuition is available to me. Uh, if I'm not, if I don't have the practice of being in silent, for example, I go to work and then at the work I forget all that and I become like an ordinary being, then I need to struggle to get back to my silent stage and get to that intuition uh, mode and uh, to listen to that. And so actually it has to be opposite. When I'm in a work situation, when I'm uh, interacting with the world, that is the time I need to use my intuition. When I'm in a, in a uh, difficult time situation, that's the time I need to use my intuition because uh, I don't need to uh, use my intuition when I'm just sitting quietly when everything is good. But I do need to use when I'm driving and there is a, uh, um, you know, when I'm doing something focused at that time or when I uh, in a high, uh, high stake situation, that's when I need to use it. So I need to practice being in silent, silence in those situations. Not when I'm, I'm not in the Amritvela in the morning or while I'm in the sleep stage. So I need to practice. And how do you do that? Open eye. I need to learn to practice the meditation with the open eye, number one, so that I can go out in the world and interact and uh, uh, use my uh, uh, practice, the silence, um, as I'm interacting with the world. <clears throat> Uh, secondly, in difficult situations, I need to use it. So I need to use it all the time throughout the day. Whenever there is time, whenever they say uh, anything, that I need to use it. And uh, I don't have to remember uh, God all the time, but I do have to remember I'm a peaceful soul. And that I should not forget. I'm a peaceful soul. I'm a powerful soul. I should not forget because if I forget I'm a powerful soul, then something will put me down or some situation will put me down. So, that. so that's the essence of uh, being in silence. Uh, what happens is uh, when I'm in, when I am silent, I uh, tap into my uh, intuition, my dreams, my vision. I tap into those. And uh, it's a very good, uh, it's a powerful tool to have those. So uh, one important thing about uh, uh, being in silence means silence doesn't mean half a sleep uh, stage. Silence means attention, full attention, like soldier. Uh, I'm standing and uh, some sol soldiers are trained to uh, sleep while they're, while they're standing, so like that. Uh, but even a stage further where I'm com completely awake, alert, and attentive. I'm attentive to, towards myself, that my mind is not going into... Uh, any waste, that kind of attention I need to have, uh, maintain this silence. So that is important to do that. So with that kind of a practice, I can have easy access to the intuition. Uh, next thing, we need to learn to listen to our intuition. And uh, why? Because like previously we said, it's a little voice that tells you its opinion and it never uh, will stop, but we need to learn to listen to it. And the way to learn, uh, listen to it is so we need to feel uh, because uh, it has, it always gives you a good feeling. So when you listen, you get, you feel good, then you listen more. 
and you start with with the small things uh okay i need to uh do i need to eat this or that you listen to your intuition and that's how you practice i need to go here or there you you listen to your intuition you go into silence and in silence you will tap to tap into your subconscious mind and it will tell you what to do so practice like that and the more you practice the more you become uh, expert in utilizing your subconscious mind uh you need to follow all the disciplines uh the amrit vela yoga or early morning hours uh is uh why because uh um in uh, there are certain times of the day uh most of the, most of the time during the day we are in a kind of a, a peaceless a peacelessness but in amrit vela uh, yoga there is a there is a lot of peace and so you can listen uh, better so when you're learning early on you have to uh, you should you could use uh, amrit vela yoga to sharpen your in- intuition so uh, and i as mentioned here you know it's say uh, time between 2 to 5 uh, early morning hour of nectar uh and why because it's nectar because uh, you get so many goodies uh, at that time uh, you get insight from your subconscious mind at that time the there is a silence in the atmosphere all the souls are sleeping most of the souls are sleeping and then their conscious mind is sleeping so their disturbed mind is sleeping their good mind is awakened and so there is a lot of goodness out there in the ambience um and then uh, there is a lot of purity in the atmosphere so your own uh, waste and negative thoughts are minimum at that time and so you can uh, uh you can have a lot of uh, benefit of using it your creativity is high because your uh, right brain is more active you are more connected with your subconscious and so following codes of a conduct conduct is as important as uh, waking up early in the morning uh what kind of food i need to use who are the uh uh who are the um the people soul or thoughts that i am uh in company with throughout the day what kind of thoughts i have throughout the day uh who i accompany in my mind throughout the day that i need to be aware um and uh, this we already talked uh, we need to have the ability to discern whether this is the true uh, intuition or it is a, uh, a you know a voice coming from the conscious mind and so uh, the uh, the uh, the way to dis- uh, to differentiate again is uh, it uh, it makes me feel good it always make me feel good and versus the the voice coming from inferior uh, awareness will uh, make me feel disturbed and then you have to have the faith in yourself a faith in your story and faith in in the supreme soul once you have a faith you have a courage you uh, you are able to take risk because listening to an intuition is a risk how much of a risk i take uh when i listen to my intuition small thing fine but when it comes to a big decision making uh it is very important and i cannot just take a risk like that and so but if you have a strong faith you can take a risk like that and uh, a lot of time earlier on we make a, a wrong decision too and it doesn't this doesn't mean that i never make wrong decisions we do because the the maya is strong and maya can make you uh, you know make you fool sometimes and you uh, inadvertently uh, do something not right and so at that time the key is not to punish yourself 
No, that's the wrong thing to do because you have already fallen, you fell down, and again, you don't want to make yourself further down. You say uh, you need to have, uh, instead of feeling disheartened like that, you need to feel light and you take a responsibility. Okay, that's, this happened because I was not careful. And so I'm now onwards, I'll be more careful that you need to assure yourself that kind of maturity has to be there. And so that faith is important. The more uh, faith you have in yourself and your drama and, and father, the, the more you will have access to the intuition. Intuition will be your best friend at that time. So you can take a jump of the courage or leap of the faith. And meditation, of course, when you meditate, you have all these things available to you. You have access to silence. You can listen to the intuition. You can get into the subconscious mind, etc. cetera. So uh, meditation, one thing that I want to mention that meditation doesn't mean that uh, in the morning, evening time or in the uh, traffic control time only. Meditation means in between time also. More importantly, so in between times. Because you're fine at the time of traffic control. But then what happens? So in between times, meditation is the most important. So you keep your stage elevated while in action. You remain light like a child and you will have access to that best friend of you. And balance has to be there. That means you cannot just use uh, intuition uh, for everything. You have to use the logic too. You have to use your right brain also, left brain also. And uh, before I conclude, I would, I would like to read this uh, excerpt from the elevated version of the father. <clears throat> and uh, I assume everybody in this uh, group knows uh, somewhat about Raj Yoga. So I'll straightforward read this. Can you catch your divine sun scars of 5,000 years ago? Always be conscious that you were that. And that you were, and that you are now once again becoming that. So, being conscious of who I was, and now I am becoming that. These two. The more you are able to catch those sun scars, the more you will be able to create and be, and become your own practical form. Make your consciousness powerful. That is, make it elevated and clear. You should clearly experience your original form and sanskars in the same way that you experience your present form and sanskar. Always have the determined thought that you were that. This is called catching power. You should constantly be able to see your original form and sanskars in front of you. By making your consciousness powerful, your attitude and vision will automatically become powerful. Remove whatever weakness now remains and become the embodiment of experience. When golden aged souls incarnate, they don't have the slightest knowledge about this effort making life. In the same way, you should be able to merge within yourself the knowledge of weakness and defects. Constantly consider this old world to be the guest house. Throw out the weakness and don't allow them to re-enter. So this is a beautiful version from, uh, from Father. I read this because this is the essence of the whole uh, study that we did. The catching power that is mentioned here is nothing but that intuition, the, the intuitive voice that you catch. Of course, there's a catching power coming from above too, and that's another um, uh, topic. But this catching power is in this, uh, uh, today's uh, topic is the intuition that you catch. By having that memory of who you are, then you catch that. So that. 
And these are some of the um, um, internet uh, sites where I went to compile this. And mainly uh, this website here, it's a beautiful one. And then I have used, I, I heard these other uh, speakers. So I'm gonna stop the share and uh, if there's anybody has any question, I can answer that. If not, we can go into a short meditation. Would anyone what? like to share uh, any insights or comments or questions? This was really, um, we had an advanced class on intuition, I would say. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Vinod, for that. I, I, I really liked your seven points. Silence, listen, Amrit Vela, discern, faith and courage, meditation, and balance. The very healthy points. And also I like the goodies at Amrit Vela. That's very nice. So um, I'd love to hear from the gathering, um, any insights or sharings, um, how you could relate to the material. Intuition is a very personal thing. And I think we know that you captured that very well. It, it is your personal journey, but how can you logically, you know, know the boundaries of intuition? So your graph was really clear. Um, just knowing, you know, how you can tell if, you know, that sensation is guiding you in a unlimited direction or a, what I would call a limited direction. You can have fruits one way or the other. There can be fruits for us, right? I mean, whether it's uh, more of a gross or base, as you said, um, acquisition, um, achievement, goal. Um, we have to pay the bills. We have to get a roof over our head. We have to look after our children and so on. And where our needs are met and um, also enjoy and, um, and so on. But then when we disempower others to take advantage and disempower others, then I, that's how I sort of defi define it. If I empower others, I empower myself. If I disempower others, then I'm going to feel it. It, it'll come out in different ways. That's how I know when my conscience bites, it's actually a good thing when I've become so numb that I can't hear it anymore. That's when it's dangerous. And I will maybe get short term goals, but not, I'll never have happiness. But I would love to hear if anyone like to share. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I had never thought about, I think in the beginning, it, um, it was said that when using intuition, it brings you happiness or makes you feel happy. I think I heard something along those lines. And so that was a new reflection for me. Um, and then also when you reflect on it, Usually the most important decisions are based on intuition more so than logic or intellect. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, that was just, uh, you know, kind of an interesting reflection for myself. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciated the talk. Uh. Anything on that, Vinod, on that? Yes, um, it's so very right. Uh, in the present world, the emphasis is on the other. Uh, such a powerful tool that we have access to. 
but there is more uh, importance given to the logical than the intuition. People think that that's something superstitious and uh, don't pay attention. But now I think there's a more and more spirituality uh, awareness there. And so uh, there is more uh, inclusion of that uh, intuition power uh, into different fields. In, uh, in India, there is a, uh, uh, in the field of, in the game of the cricket, they use this uh, technique to teach the, um, the players how to use the intuition because you can train them how to ball and bat. But then uh, when it comes to real game, it is the intuition that comes handy. So um, it is used more and more. And like I mentioned in the military, they use it. They use it in uh, different uh, areas. Businessmen uh, in big corporations also use this technique. Um, I was just, I was just thinking. I know I've, I've heard, I've seen, uh, talked about mind, body, and intellect so many times. Sorry, mind, body, and sanskar, uh, mind, intellect, and sanskar so many times. But Vinod Bhai had it so well put together in a slide that I, in fact, took a snapshot. I took a picture of it for my own reference later, and I thought that was very well explained. And now it's easy with the word team, like how he explained that thoughts. Team stands for thoughts, emotions, uh, memory. Uh, a is for attitude. So I remember now that when I think it was a very uh, the effort you put in putting all the slides. Um, I thank you for that. Really, I enjoyed it. Thank you, Mana. We always enjoy listening to Brother Vinod. He uh, he's a very good teacher and uh, makes a lot of sense on. Uh, how he explains things really hits home for me. And uh, yeah, I asked for the link too, because I, I want to listen from the beginning. So thanks. Thank you, Vinod. Um, you're very, very good at what you're doing and we really appreciate it. I would have liked to share something, but when I listen to Vinod Bhai, I listen with all my attention. And his lectures are always very clear cut and right, kind of. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, there is no place for arguments or asking questions. But I like the way he puts it. It sounds so easy. And still, like when he said practice being in silence is one, two, three, four, five, about six, seven, eight points. But if you look at that, that will be the lifetime practice. I was thinking that one point I am always saying is, if we are grateful, right? Like the gratitude helps us to think more clearly and the intentions. If our intention is very clear and good or pure, and if we have gratitude, it is easier to get the right decisions or think in a right way. So I was thinking if Vinod Bhai can uh, give one lecture or some kind of practice on gratitude. That was just a thought. Anyway, so thank you again, uh, brother, for the class. And thank you again for everyone joining us. And I'll have the um, video uploaded on our website and also on our Anubuti Retreat Center channel. So you can find it on YouTube as well. Um, okay, so thank you. And we'll close with a meditation. So sit with the awareness that I am a soul in this world of five elements. Fully awake. interacting peacefully with my immediate surrounding. And gently moving along in this world 
of time and place. I remain close to my true nature of peace and purity. The violet light of the sun of knowledge is spreading in the whole universe. The Supreme Teacher, the Supreme Father is energy of love and knowledge is immersing all three worlds and every soul is transformed now to their best glow. And they are spreading their beautiful light in the universe. I'm now ready to return to my kingdom. I take a deep breath in the fresh air of the new world. Om Shanti and thank you all. Thank you and Om Shanti, everyone. Good night.